Greetings, consciousness, and welcome back. And so in this podcast, we are talking about Satan. Satan is not a man. Satan doesn't sit in the clouds and influence man. In the universe, we have positive and negative, and this is all part of the one. Positive and negative, just as we have male and female, left brain, right brain. The human being is a light being trapped in a physical body, so we are also dual. We have a dualistic nature, you see. And so long as the light body is in a physical body, the physical body has its own needs, you see. And so we need to look at the meaning of Satan because this name somehow there is a misconception about it. Satan simply means an adversary, an opposition of who you are, that's what it means, a blocker, you see. Why an adversary? Because Satan is simply the ego mind. You have your subconscious mind and the ego mind, or the higher mind and the ego mind. You see, and the ego mind will always make us feel as if we are only the physical. And so we must live to please the physical only and this ego mind has been known in most religions as some entity called Satan that is why I made a podcast a while back talking about angels and demons and who they really are which is still on the page because everything is about consciousness When you reach a certain level of thought, there's only one reality, which is consciousness, which many people call God. And this consciousness has manifested itself into all things, so that consciousness can experience life in various bodies. But in order to make the experience feel real, consciousness puts himself to sleep. That is why we say that the heart knows the truth. But the ego mind, who is Satan, thinks it is in charge, you see. And so Satan will only rule for a time. But what time? so long as you are in a physical body. Because when we lay down a physical body, the time for Satan, the ego mind, is over. Because I've said before, the only time the mind, the body, and the spirit comes together is when we are alive. Once we are dead, these three entities will go their separate ways. And so Satan can no longer trouble you, which is simply the ego mind. Which is why awakening is very difficult. Easy and yet difficult. Because so long as we have a false identity of who we are, to wake up is always difficult. You see. But we actually have the power to overcome Satan because Satan is just a mind it can only suggest to us it has no power over us you see so whilst many people think Satan is a, a, a being somewhere who is whispering in our minds it's not so both God and Satan are two sides of the same coin Satan is God's friend, 
They are not enemies. Now, if you cast your mind back to the book of Job, they said God had a congregation, or He held a congregation with His sons, the children, the sons of God, came to meet with God. This is just stories. You shouldn't take it literally. And Satan came also. But because this is a story, they say God is omnipresent, omnipotent. But God asked Satan, where have you been? Satan said, I've been roaming through, you know, to and fro in the earth. But if God is the all-knower of all things, he would have known where Satan was coming from. But if you look at the story, Job is mentioned, and Satan is saying, Job is only worshipping you because you have given him everything. But who gave the order for this Satan that is supposed to be our enemy and enemy of God to go and destroy Job's earthly possessions? It wasn't Satan. God himself gave the order. And so these two are really best friends. But of course, in this world, when evil befalls us, we think there's no God, which is really consciousness. When everything is going well, business is booming, you have a fine woman, nice ass, nice boobs, and you are really winning. You are on top of the world. But when business is not going so well, and she dumps your ass, then all of a sudden, there is no God. And so the story of Job is just a life lesson. Job remained conscious of who he was. You see, that is the way when you know who you are. Whether things are going good or going bad, you understand who you are. Whatever happens to Job's family or his flesh, knowing he's not a body, did not bother him. Because at this rate, you know you are consciousness. You are one with the Supreme. But like I said, this consciousness puts it itself under hypnosis so he can enjoy or it can enjoy the ride. That is what makes you aware that you are alive. You are conscious. You are not unconscious. And so I'll give you an example. If you wanted to go and see a movie that has been advertised and you can't wait to see this movie and you tell your brother, I will not use the term your friend because there's no such a thing as a friend. We all have one supreme father. We may come from different parents, but you don't have a friend. That's why I refer to everyone as brother. Your Bible tells you, you only have one father who's out in heaven. If you know who you are, then your language or your speech will change. But if you are going to see a movie, you tell your brother, and they say, I've seen the movie. It's really good. And then they start getting all excited to tell you all about it. But then you turn around and you say to them, look, don't tell me anything. I don't want to know what happened. I want to go and see for myself. Why don't you want him to tell you what happened in the movie? Because it will ruin your experience. You see, and so you'd rather be under hypnosis. So when you go to the theater, you can enjoy it. Such is the nature of consciousness. Because God knows everything, or supposed to know everything. 
therefore, in a body. If this consciousness doesn't put himself under hypnosis, then it will know everything from beginning to end. That will ruin the experience. You see, that is why memory fades. Our past memories don't stay with us for long because it would be difficult for human beings to move on. That is why I said to you in the past, our suffering normally comes from our memory of things, our past experiences. If you enjoyed something, you want more of it. And if you have a painful experience in the past, when that comes back, you suffer. And so to renew your mind makes you a new being that every day is different. And so the only time you realize the ego mind has no power over you or Satan is when you wake up to your true self. You see, once you realize the mind has no power over you, it is just a tool that has been added onto you. Then you can wake up and see through everything as it is. Then you can make the right choices. Because people have a misconception about third eye opening. The third eye opening is just the eye of intuition. Third eye is opening, third eye is closing. Who is the one that is watching the third eye opening and closing? It is consciousness. Your higher self, you see. But again, there is a misconception about the third eye. Like you open your third eye and you start seeing entities. You go to the market and you see devils and stuff like this. That's not the third eye. The eye of intuition, the inner eye. We have physical eyes. But when you close your eyes, you still see. Just as you see in a dream. And you see lights in your dreams. And so back to Satan. Satan is not a person. Satan is just the ego mind. The ego mind is your adversary. Your blocker. You see, this is why I'm making this podcast, so you don't go out there thinking there is a Satan who exists outside of God or consciousness. Everything is made by the same source. And so going forward, know thyself. You see, because some people live only to please the physical. We are supposed to balance both the spiritual or the energy body or the light body with the physical body. Balance. The only way you find peace. Because if you live to just please the physical body, then you always be in pain. Because everything you desire is just an illusion. It'll only satisfy the flesh for a time and then you want something else. If money, for example, made human beings happy, 
then people like Michael Jackson would have been the most happiest people on the planet. But you saw Michael's life. The more money he made, the more painkillers he needed. Because once you go up, there's only one way to go. And you have to come down. The Kibalian will tell you what goes up must come down. And so the sages of all ages have seek to find a way to balance both their light body and the physical body. It is only at this point or at this rate you find peace. And peace is the most expensive thing you can acquire in this earth. It is priceless. And so I'm going to leave this podcast. And I hope you understand what Satan really is. Because all these spiritual tests you have in the earth is all talking about yourself. The dualistic nature of who you are. That's all it is. That is why spiritual journeys is a personal journey. Nobody can do it for you because it is only when you realize who you are. That is when the journey begins. And you do not compare yourself to anybody because what works for one person may not work for you. Because if you look at somebody and you say, oh, this person is so advanced or so awake, how can I be like this person? then there's always going to be some sort of emptiness in you. But how do you know that person is really what you think they are? You see? And so consciousness, we're going to leave this podcast. Do take care of yourselves. And perhaps I'll check in during Christmas. Peace. Peace.